Welcome. So in this module, we'll take a look at what are the steps in the vulnerability management lifecycle. And we already referred in the last module that vulnerability management is a lifecycle approach to managing the vulnerabilities or the weaknesses. So the VM steps are analyze the assets. Number two, prepare the scanner. Number three, run the vulnerability scan. Number four, assess and organize the results. Number five is actually patch the systems. And number six is you verify by doing a rescan. So let's take a look at each of these steps. Now, first of all, we analyze the assets. Now, what do we do when we analyze the assets? So we have to run a vulnerability scan over our whole network. So we examine the assets to scan, and it could be some ser a portion of your servers in the data center, or it could be one subnet in your network, or it could be a uh, particular segment of, uh, in your network which perhaps consists of switches or other devices. It could be a firewall, for example, that you want to scan. Um, so it could be one or several devices, and based on that, you need to examine the assets, you need to gather the details of the IP subnet, and you also need to understand what else is on that subnet, because when you will start scanning on this particular subnet, there will be traffic on that subnet and there may be some performance degradation. So look at the potential issues with network traffic, who owns um, or, or, or which equipment or which devices lie on that subnet, what type of uh, computers or systems or business systems are on that, and referring to, you know, referring back to the criticality, is it in the data center, is it on the edge, are these test systems, are these live production systems, then we have to organize and prepare ourselves for the, for, for the scanning. And then finally, you have to inform the asset owners and take them on board and, and uh, share with them the timeline and the steps and give them some awareness about what you're gonna do about, um, you know, for the assets. And later on, we'll look at if you have a credential-based scan, then you also need to get the credentials uh, from the asset owners. So step two is prepare the scanner. Now here we set the scanner parameters we will obviously select the type of scan that we want to conduct. It could be a vulnerability scan. If it's a website, uh, we would select a web application test, for example. So you select the type of scan, and then um, there may be credentials involved. So there are two types of scans. There's a non-credential scan, which is a non-intrusive scan, and, and then there's a credential scan, which goes into a little bit more detail and utilizes the feature set of the credentials that you supply. Um, and that is the better approach because uh, with the credentials, you get more information. You know, the vulnerability scanner is able to acquire more information and it, you can also do uh, more features with the credential-based scan. And then you explore and research the plugins and every vulnerability scanner will have different features. And uh, the Nessus scanner, for example, has a lot of plugins and you can do compliance-based scans or you can do um, certain uh, scans related to certain standards of frameworks like PCI or ISO 27001. And, and for that, there are different plugins. Or, and you can also scan against CIS and DISA um, benchmarks. And then you do, it's good to do a test run on a smaller part of that particular subnet. So if there's 20 switches or 20 network devices on a particular subnet which you want to scan eventually, first do a scan on just one or two devices um, and do a trial run. Um, also taking on board the, uh, the asset owner. And then you coordinate with the asset owner. And number three is run the vulnerability scanner. So now you um, have prepared, you've taken the, the asset owner on board and you run the actual automated scan and you monitor for network degradation issues and you actually schedule, try to schedule the scan when it's off hours. Um, uh, however, the network should obviously be up at that time. And then you generate the, the report for the, for the scan. The assess results step consists of evaluating your scan report because there's going to be a lot of information. You, priori you prioritize according to the risk level involved and your scanner will give you a risk rating, um, a critical or a high or a medium or a low uh, with regards to the particular vulnerability that was present on the asset. And then you collate all the results and you separate the results because there may be different asset owners. The switches may be a different asset owner, the firewall may be a different asset owner, the servers may be a different asset owner. So depending on what type of a scan you're doing, you separate the report and send it out to these asset owners. And then you communicate the results 
also to management and, and also the remediation timelines as per your policy. It may be a quarterly timeline, it may be a monthly timeline to actually complete the cycle and fix those vulnerabilities and weaknesses. And then you patch the systems, you research the vulnerabilities before that, you have to evaluate the fixes and the remediation method. Uh, you have to actually evaluate if that particular patch is relevant and required. This is very important because patches usually consist of functionality, and if you're not running those features, then you may not require that patch in, in any case. So just because a patch is out doesn't mean that it's relevant and important and required for your network. This is a very important step. You should always evaluate if you actually need the patch. And, and for that, you need to do background research. So you test the patches and fixes in a test environment. You eventually, you apply the patches uh, by taking downtime um, on the production system, if it is in the production network where you're applying the patches, and you monitor the results. Uh, finally, when the patching cycle is complete and the remediation has been done, the patches have been applied, you have to go back to the scanner and redo the test. Um, and now, those vulnerabilities which were present before should not reappear in the scan. So you rescan to confirm that the vulnerability scanner gives, gives a positive report uh, this time. Uh, you collate the results of the vulnerability scan, you report the findings, and hopefully all was well and everything was completed on time. Uh, so that's the complete life cycle of the vulnerability management. Thank you.